This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's back, the Microsoft Surface Book. This is, well, called the 2016 edition with the performance base. The performance base really makes this what we'd hoped it was after all of Microsoft's hyping for the first generation. Now the dedicated graphics in here is powerful enough to let you play some reasonably current games. It's good enough for video editing, and the price tag has gone up to match the capabilities. We're going to look at it now. Well, meet the new boss. Not exactly the same as the old boss, so at first blush it certainly does look the same. I'm not going to cover everything in detail because we already did a detailed Surface Book review a year ago. And the updated model with the performance base, well, most of the changes are in the base. And there's a couple of just key changes, really. There's not a, a total reworking of the product, obviously. So this is available now, November 2016. It has the same 3000 by 2000 Pixel Sense IPS display, lovely high contrast ratio, 1300 to 1, thanks to really good black levels and very good brightness, 346 nits. Black level 0 0.27, so that's really not changed from the last generation, but let's just say this 3 by 2 aspect ratio display is awesome. Backlit keyboard, two part design, same old button you press and you hold, and you can lift this up and da -da, it becomes a tablet or a clipboard as Microsoft liked to call it. I still think of it as a tablet because it really is. This is pretty light by itself. The product together now is a little bit heavier if you get it with performance base because, well, it has a bigger battery inside and beefier dedicated graphics. And those are the important things to keep in mind. As the same dynamic fulcrum hinge, this kind of interesting thing. Now notice how much thicker this is here. There's a curve that goes up. It's beautiful. It's sculpted. It's clever. And there's ventilation actually over here. And when you close it, it looks like there's a gap and at the edge there is, but because it tapers up, you're going to find that things really don't get inside there in between like they used to. Now as a 15 inch MacBook Pro replacement, thanks to Apple's refresh of the Pro line, removing all legacy ports, this one could actually be a refreshing alternative. Yes, it's expensive. It starts at $23.99 with the performance base. The old options are still available. But you do get things like two regular old USB 3.0 ports, an SD card slot. Of course, the headphone jack's here too. And a mini display port as well. So it's funny, a year ago this seemed like, oh, it had okay, just barely enough ports. Now it seems like, well, it's, it's real whopping with ports now. And that's also because the likes of Dell with the XPS series and HP Spectres have dropped a whole lot of ports too. So this one becomes one of the more bumpy ones when it comes to ports. You still get your 8 megapixel rear camera and a front 5 megapixel camera with Windows Hello for facial recognition. And most importantly, this is still Intel 6th generation Skylake, a dual core CPU just like last year's model. The good news is when it first came out, it was a uh, buggy because Skylake in general gave Windows and Intel a lot of problems. All that's ironed out. This is no longer going to be Chucky the crazy evil laptop. It works very smoothly. The bad news is, is that the seventh generation Intel KB Lake CPUs are out now. So this one's surprisingly a little bit behind. I'm not sure why Microsoft didn't rev that up. And for those of you who are contemplating the Mac versus the Surface Book, this is obviously the previous generation 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro. Uh, but you get an overall idea of the size and the build quality and the attention to detail here. They're identically good and both have beautiful displays. Uh, the updated 15-inch MacBook Pro will have a higher gamut display than even Surface Book. And that's pretty impressive since Surface Book has such a lovely display. But it's 76% of Adobe RGB versus in a nearly 100%, you know, is going to make a difference for those of you who are doing graphics work for print. The good news is it still has a really wonderful keyboard with ample key travel and backlighting. So for those of you who are a little scared by the MacBook Pro's super low travel keyboard, this one is real pleasant to type on. The trackpad is also one of the best you're going to find in the world of Windows and just about as good as the Macs. It's very responsive. And that extra curve up for the performance base, I think, makes the keyboard a little bit more ergonomic, puts it in a nice tilt. The display, you know, some people are bothered by the fact you can't quite open this with one finger. It's going to catch about this far up and it's going to slide a little bit unless you hold the base down. I could care less, honestly, but I know some of you do. 
and some of you are bothered by the little bit of wobble. This is really not that much wobble, but if you use it constantly on a bouncy bus or train, you could care. What I do dislike is that it still doesn't recline further than that. That's as far back as it goes, and sometimes I'm using it kind of on a low table, and I'm higher up, and I just want to be able to tilt it back more. It's not that the viewing angles aren't adequate, it just would be more ideal. And here you can see where the ventilation is for the base, so it aims the heat away from you. Uh, I'm really impressed with the fact that on the underside there are there's no ventilation here, yeah, and yet it doesn't ever get hot to the touch, burning hot. Even when I was playing Civ 6 for longer than I should be playing Civ 6, because right, I should be working. Anyway, an hour of Civ 6, still okay. This has the NVIDIA GTX 965M with 2 gigabyte of DDR5 VRAM. The previous base was about equivalent to the NVIDIA 940M, which was a real so-so GPU, better integrated graphics, yeah, but that's about all you could say. So Microsoft's big brouhaha when they first announced Surface Book and showed them using advanced CAD programs and all this other stuff and video editing, well, that sure was an exaggeration. It's a dual-core Ultrabook and it had wimpy graphics. This performance base makes all the difference. Even though this is the now last generation NVIDIA Maxwell platform, the 9 series GPU, and not the new Pascal 10 series GPU, which would have been nice. I suppose Microsoft didn't want to hold it up longer because the replacement for this 9 series card, this particular one, would be the GTX 1050M, which isn't, not M, just 1050, which isn't yet available for laptops. But anyway, that would really even further soup things up, though the heat could be maybe an issue. But anyway, Boy, is the performance better on this. Everything that Microsoft said in the initial presentation now suddenly is true. Uh, I'll show you editing some 1080p video with Adobe Premiere, and it's, it's just night and day different. It really is much faster. Scrubbing through video, even export times are good. They're about equivalent to my 15-inch MacBook Pro actually, also running Premiere. Now, that said, Premiere is not nearly as well optimized for Mac OS as is Final Cut Pro, so Premiere is kind of always a pig on Macs. And there's that. Gaming. Before, you know, gaming was <laughs> not so super awesome. Now you can play games from 2014, 2015, about 1080p resolution and medium to high settings. You can play Battlefield 4 on this. You can play Civ 6, which is a 2016 game. This is not really going to be playing something like Battlefield 1 on 1080p and ultra settings, though. It's not a gaming laptop still. 720p and low settings? Yeah, maybe. But, you know, if, if your tastes run to less super demanding games, not the, the AAA titles that are the most 3D killer, it, it's absolutely fine if you like older games and that sort of thing, too. It, it's it's really, yes, if you're wondering if the price difference is, is worth it, if you do video editing, if you do CAD work, if you want to play some light to moderate gaming on this, this is what you want. And it's going to cost you a pretty penny, too. By the way, that NVIDIA GTX 965M card, just like the previous dedicated GPU option for the Surface Book, uses a very late issue driver. It's the 369 from NVIDIA right now, which is pretty much with all the laptops that we've just gotten in for review or shipping with. They have NVIDIA dedicated graphics, but you can't just download NVIDIA drivers directly from NVIDIA, just the same way as it was before. It'll just say it doesn't find any compatible hardware so you got to stick with whatever Microsoft sends you in the way of driver updates. And typically, they're obviously slower than NVIDIA, who comes out with like a new driver every other week, but you'll get them probably every month. So here's the charger, which looks a lot like the old charger. It still has that USB 3.0 charging port for your smartphone or whatever. Now, that's a higher output charger if you get the performance based Core i7 model that we have here. Here's the old charger, just to compare it. There's a noticeable difference in size. That's because the, the GTX 965M, is, it consumes considerably more power than the Wimpy GPU in the pre previous base. But Microsoft has also up battery capacity. It's really actually phenomenal. Between the, the battery in the tablet and the battery in the base, we've got 81 watt hours. That is a lot. We're talking, you know, pushing up in Dell XPS 15 land of battery capacity, which for a still kind of ultrabook with a 13.5 inch display, that's a lot of battery. Now, they haven't changed the clipboard or the tablet section at all. So you still got the same approximately two hours of just clipboard by itself use. 
That's where the CPU lives, by the way, too, and the RAM and all that stuff. And obviously, that's pretty well sealed up. You're not going to be upgrading anything. Still get PCIe SSDs, a variety of capacities, available 256, 512, a terabyte even. So Microsoft makes some pretty big claims for battery life. Like they're saying, oh, 14 hours of streaming video playback. And you know what? Because the Intel Skylake platform is so well optimized for that, it'll use Intel HD 520 integrated graphics when it's doing that, which is perfectly adequate. That's not an insane claim. The thing really does best when it's playing video. It's really funny. Now, having it at about 33% brightness, which is decently bright if you're not in too bright a room, and because it's a very, very bright display. Uh, it's possible, it really is, to, to hit 14 hours. Most of us don't loop videos endlessly and just sit in front of the laptop, though. You probably do, say, light productivity use. If you're using MS Office, editing a few photos in Photoshop, and streaming some video, too, uh, you're looking at mm, about 10 hours, 9 to 10 hours or so. And that's pretty impressive as laptops go. Now, if you're really pushing it hard, if you're doing video editing on the road, playing some Metro games, live tile games, one of the nicer 3D games and stuff like that, then you're looking at as low as six to seven hours. But pushing any laptop that hard, you're really going to see diminished battery life anyhow. So honestly, this is, this is a real Energizer bunny as laptops go. And potentially, it could even beat out, say, the 13-inch and the 15-inch latest generation MacBook Pro for battery life, depending, again, on what you're using it for. Now, some of you might asks, so there's that really nice HP Spectre X360 with KB Lake right there, 1159 with a Core i7, 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD, just like this 2399 Surface Book. Why should I pay more? It depends on what you want to use it for. Maybe you really shouldn't. To be honest, the HP has a, a very pleasing display. It has nice, fast performance, decent battery life, better than decent, in fact, and also a very attractive industrial design going on. But it doesn't support the pen anymore. Aha, uh -huh, the pen, the pen that's in the box. By the way, same pen technology as the previous generation, Surface Book and Surface Pro 4. You got your 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity, palm rejection. It works the same. If you like the pen on the previous Surface Book or the Surface Pro 4, you'll like this too. The display is obviously larger and higher quality too on the Microsoft Surface Book. You get much higher contrast ratio. Better color calibration out of the box, and it calibrates more perfectly with a hardware colorimeter to get it as absolutely close as possible. Beyond that, you're paying for the detachable fancy frou-frou design here, this fulcrum hinge, that sort of stuff, and Microsoft Windows 10 Pro versus Home Edition. So, and then there's that dedicated GPU. Obviously, there's two levels now of dedicated GPU, that 940M equivalent, and now this performance-based 965M. You can video edit on this and not tap your fingers on the desk and watch video stutter when you're scrubbing. So for those of you who do it more than occasionally for a hobby, you do it professionally or semi-professionally, uh, you would definitely want something more like the Surface Book if you can afford it. Now, there are other obviously laptops with dedicated graphics. This is not the only option, but that's what it offers versus the HP. Uh, you, it's possible to play some games and really have a good time on the Surface Book and with the Spectre. It's an Ultrabook. It's it's not really a gaming laptop at all. Old games, uh, some, some Metro casual games, it's really what it's about. And of course, the Surface Book works with the new $99 Surface Dial, which is a puck. And see, it. you can use it for doing things like zooming in. You can use it for changing your colors. It depends on the application support. Yeah, there's about 15 apps that support this right now, and more will be coming. And of course, Windows itself does for things like volume and brightness control. And it's actually pretty ergonomic and intuitive. I've been enjoying using it. Now, it's going to require firmware updates sometime in early 2017 before you can use this directly on the display like you can with Surface Studio. That said, you can see how much of space it takes up here. I think most people are going to want to use it on a desk instead. So that's the, as ever, unique Microsoft Surface Book. Back again, more powerful than ever if you have the money to spend. And Honestly, if I think this is going to win some 15-inch MacBook Pro possible buyers over because it has more ports. It has a stunning display with a very useful resolution. The graphics performance is right up there with my outgoing model 15-inch MacBook Pro, which says a lot. Anyway, still one of the neatest laptops out there. One of the most innovative designs I've ever seen and actually a very pleasant and fast product to use.
and it should be for the price, right? I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you liked it.